what the five pillars of multiple intelligence are, because I know you talked about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the five pillars of emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is really about um, recognizing, understanding, and managing your own emotions, and then recognizing, understanding, managing, and influencing the emotions of others. So it's really, uh, you know, it's a lot of fancy words to say it's really what makes us human. What makes us human, what makes us people is our ability to feel an emotion. And then what we do with that is our choice. So there are five pillars of emotional intelligence um, that really are the foundation for understanding and then uh, processing our emotions and moving through. So the first is uh, self-awareness, self-regulation. Uh, motivation, empathy, and social skills. So those are the five pillars that I focus on. How can we nurture our own self-awareness and help other people too? <clears throat> the best tool that I found for nurturing self-awareness, whether it's in yourself or others, is asking questions. So um, when you are in a conversation with somebody, and, you're and they are talking about some, something that somebody said or something that made them feel a certain way. What we tend to do when we have conversations is, is come at people with advice, right? We've are, we are already mentally preparing our answer before we've even heard everything that the other person has said. And so when you want to nurture your own self-awareness and self-awareness in others, you really need to take a step back and not have that prepared statement ready, but really ask questions to dig deeper to understand what they are really saying and to help them dig deeper to understand why they are feeling that the way that they're doing, the, the, why they're feeling the way that they're feeling. A lot of teens um, are stressed with everything they have to deal with, like school, homework, uh, uh, sports, relationships, uh, etc. How So I, I, I know, you know, because we've talked about it from with Shanti, you've heard of it, like the statistics of kids under 18, they're very, um, ha have risen in, in recent years in like, in like depression, anxiety in young kids. So leading more towards self-regulation, how can we nurture our own self-regulation so that we don't become depressed or anxious teenagers and can, and can grow up to be happier, less depressed adults? So when I talk about, you know, following your passion and doing what you love, I don't want it to be misunderstood as, you know, those are the only things that you get to do. You know, we all have to do things that are not our passion. And, and are not things that you know we love. I still have to get up and wash dishes. I still have to you know make my bed. I still have to do my homework. I still have to do all of these things. But I think that when you balance it out with things that you really love and that you're motivated with, then you understand how it doing all of those activities kind of uh, rounds you off. And where the stress and the anxiety comes from really is from feeling like we're being forced to do something that we don't want to do. And that is a pattern of the mind. That's a mindset. And so although I, you know, I strongly believe that um, depression and anxiety is a very real thing, I believe that when it first starts out, especially in our youth, that it is a pattern of choice and behavior that we can change. So when we start to feel this anxiousness or this stress from a test or a relationship or doing too many things, it is our responsibility to ourselves to take that step back and say, what is it is that is increasing my stress and anxiety? Why is it doing that? Why is it increasing my stress and anxiety? And now what am I going to consciously decide to do about it?